All right, guys, so here is a 560M John Deere round baler. Um, this is the newer, newest one on the market. Um, they have a, a 560R, uh, I believe is what it is. Um, it's the premium baler. Um, what that is, is it's going to have actual plastic doors on it. It's going to be much like the other balers where it actually has uh, a computer on board and it's ISO capable to go to the tractor. This one is not. This is the mid-grade or mid-range side, so you're going to have the old monitor that's always been with it. Um, so we will kind of highlight that when we look at the monitor. Um, so starting off, we open up the door. Okay, so here we got our, our main things coming in. We got our PTO coming in. We got our slip clutch, okay? We are measuring our slip clutch because we need to know we're going to alert that uh, operator if we start actually slipping. Um, the old ones actually had discs that you could actually tighten up. Um, this one basically it still has the discs but it's going to be spring tensioned. You cannot adjust that. So if you if you basically wear out your discs you're going to be having to buy a new one. Okay. Um, with this we got our gearbox coming in. Okay. We come out to the side. Uh, up here is our hydraulic uh, valve block here. This is actually our bale tension adjustment right here, this, this gold knob. Okay, so if we want more tension, we're just going to thread it in. What it is, is it's basically a relief valve. So the tighter we have it in there, the more we're going to restrict it. Okay, this one right here, this is what they call the soft core option. Um, so that will actually allow it to have a variable core, um, some different stuff in that. We'll look at that in the manual. But that is basically a valve block right on there. Um, Looking at here, we do have uh, we have our hydraulic cylinders here. So the other ones that the other manufacturers we had quite substantially larger cylinders on. Uh, we're going to be having this tension spring right here. Uh, that one is going to be quite a bit different. Um, that one is going to be able to get broke. You're going to see that quite a bit. That tension cylinder or that tension spring breaks frequently uh, if you're really trying to crank the pressure on the bales. Um, we got our heavy duty chains, we got our heavy duty shafts, um, different stuff like that. Here's our chain tension for our drive. So we come off of our gearbox, come out to the side, we go up to our main drive roller up on top, okay? And then we also come back to our main drive roller on the front. From behind here, we go back through a little chain back here to our rotary stuffer, and that is gonna drive our rotary stuffer, which we will look at later. So. Um, the, as we get these bigger balers, they're making heavier bales, we're seeing the chain size increase every, almost on every model. Uh, they just keep getting a little bigger, a little heavier, a little more robust. Bearings are getting larger just to take on more bales, so um, keep them on the field longer. So we have around the back. We have our, we have a hydraulic cylinder right here for our, uh, basically for our pickup attachment. We do have a manual crank that we can actually set that uh, so we, we can, we don't leave it all the way on the ground. So, but you still have the hydraulic option for in the field. Uh, you got your door lock right here and then you also have your door latch right there with a sensor on each side. So if we ever pop that out, we can see that right away. Um, we can just go through that quick. So when we go to open this up, as we open our door, the one thing that makes this baler different from everybody else is we actually slack the belts. Okay, so that's how we stop them from running. Um, we literally just lose tension. So as we start opening it up, if you look up on top, you can see the tension arm comes up. Okay, so that slacks the belts. Our, open, our, our door starts opening. The other one that's different from this is we actually have a chain tied to this kicker. 
So as our door opens up, that's actually what's gonna pull our kicker out where everybody else has got a ramp, hydraulic ramp, spring ramp. Um, we still have the kicker. Okay, so we literally just pop up. We are spring tensioned right down here. Okay, that spring is just literally gonna keep it to try to be straight all the time. So as we hit that bale, we can actually kind of spring cushion it so we're not snapping chain. Okay. Uh, if we start snapping these chains, most of the time it's going to be this little link right here, this little chain link that's going to actually connect right here. We're just going to shear that off. If that's happening, our door is opening too fast. So we keep moving. All right. So now our door or our kicker is hanging out as we close it down. It's going to hang there, keep our bail away. What not? Okay, so our cast iron hooks, our chain door, our door hooks, they're going to be basically spring tensioned along to the hydraulic cylinder, cylinder much like the Massey, or much like the Vermeer, excuse me. So it, uh, those do break every once in a while. Um, that's something to check if that door alarm is, keeps popping in, it could just be as simple as that. Inside our baler, lost our door. Now we're safe to come in. So inside our baler, right here, okay, we have our rotary stuffer. Okay, so our pickup attachments in front. Our rotary stuffer is going to be coming, so we can literally watch that work. With our pickup attachment, our rotary stuffer is literally shoving in the chamber all the time. Okay, so we can wash that real slow. Notice the chevron pump flighting. Okay, so that's for a nice even feed so we're not shock loading that chain. We're not going to break anything off. Um, it's a used bather. It's got one season through it, so that's where the squeaks and everything come from. It has found some rocks. Okay, these are just plastic wear guards, basically. Um, just going to keep that... Uh, that way they can move against these. So there is actually one of these that's pretty bent. Um, there's one missing already right there. So that's something to be kind of watching all the time. This is our starter roll. Um, notice how it's got some wear on it already. Uh, that's really, we don't have a floor roll down here like the, the Vermeer or what the New Holland does. Um, so we got to watch that. Okay, our belts is literally what's going to be actually trying to grab that bale along with our starter roll and get it actually start rolling so we have some rubber stuff here it's literally just baler melt belt or baler belting literally just to try to quiet the door down when it's closing on the back of here this is where our actual uh, bail kicker is going to hit too just to try to keep stuff a little more quiet all the time Here you can see we have our belt right here for our net wrap, okay? It's slacked so we can actually play with it. Uh, we got this basically, this rack is literally just gonna keep that net wrap. When it's applied, it's gonna come and just ride right in between the belt and this rack right here, right up until it comes inside the baler and in to onto the bale. So from there, it's gonna check. Um, on the belts, our splices, we have to check that. Notice we looked at that when we talked about the baler belts, um, how they have the leading edge uh, cut so we don't tear basically when we, if we hit something. So uh, we gotta watch for that kind of stuff all the time. Here again, just like the Vermeer, we have the, be the bearings on the back. Um, that potentiometer is actually on the outside behind this cover. So it's actually fairly easy to, uh, to get to. Um, you don't have to really adjust them too much. There is a calibration, calibration procedure which we'll look at in the manual. Um, we're not watching the middle of the bale, we're just watching the outside. So everybody else has pretty much started watching the middle of the bale as well. So uh, they know what it looks like as well. So along this side, 
Okay, we got our other tension spring. Okay, we come off of our drive roller right here and we go down to our pickup attachment. Okay, that's going to go across to the other side and actually drive the, the bottom pickup attachment with that. So um, there is a lot of power transfer flowing through this baler. Uh, there's a slip clutch right behind here. So um, it's a ratcheting style slip clutch. So literally what it's got is it's got springs pushing pistons out. And as we hit an obstruction that's too much, it's going to actually compress those springs and allow it to slip inside. And then when we get it freed up, it's going to push those pistons back out. Um, that's typically what everybody's running anymore. Um, yeah. So the front of here, actually our bale size shape sensor, or our bale size sensor, excuse me, is right there. So that's just we're measuring this bar as we come up. We're going to be tensioning right here. We're going to be coming down. Uh, this silver sensor up here, right up top there with the tag on it, that is your bale oversize sensor. So uh, if it gets too big, it literally just has that little light spring on a little on a little piece of metal that flaps against it. So as our pickup attachment looks, we got a couple different things. We got some spring tension going on here. This is our compression roll. So that's literally just gonna roll with the crop, just kind of push it down so it's a nice even feed into that baler um, to try to speed some stuff up. So let's look at the monitor quick. So this is the Bale Track Pro monitor. This is their basic monitor. Um, all the functions that are on here, plus more, if you have the, the premium baler, the ISO version, um, it's going to be on a touch screen with the, with the tractor. Okay, so here we can just simply adjust our wraps right here. So we're set for two wraps. So if we want more, we just keep clicking up or down. Um, there's a little note card that's going to, you'll see that in the manual, that's going to have that. This is our bale count, so it's actually made... Uh, two bales. This is not the right monitor for this baler because we've made more than that. Um, our wrap button, so we can literally just override it. If it doesn't wrap, we can hit that. Uh, if we don't have a full bale and we're done with the field, you can hit that. Um, extend and retract, that's what we're going to use for our twine arms pretty much. Um, that's going to send it through the cycle. If our twine arms don't come home, that's how we're going to get it there. This button here, this is the net wrap, this is the twine uh, side. So if we hold that, Okay, it's flashing. Now we are actually wrapping literally with twine. Okay, so if we watch that. We got a couple things going on here. We got our twine arms here, okay. We can adjust our spacing with this pin. We can just literally, that's gonna tell us how far this is gonna be going, okay. So if we push this back, which we will extend it. Okay, so when we're going to extend, our twine arms are literally gonna to go to the center, hang out there for about a second or two seconds, and get the bales, or get the twine wrapping on the bale. Okay, what it did here, this is our actual twine cutting, we'll look at that. So we go to extend, we go to that far side, okay, and then we're gonna hang out there, wrap, and then we're just gonna sit there and pulse this thing all the way back for a full cycle. And that's a pretty fast wrap for twine. Normally that's a 45 second cycle. Okay, and then as we come home, we come through our twine knife is right here. Okay, that is sharp. It's actually a sharp knife. And then it's gonna go to a solid shaft here. So when we come home, we're gonna come through our twine arms, take our twine, come through here, and then we're literally just gonna pull that down much like that and it's going to be basically just a friction cut on there. Um, it is sharp, it'll take about eight inches to cut that. Okay, so if we come here, just like that, and there's twines, our twine arms are home, our knife is cut, so we are good to go to kick out. Um, the other thing with here, so in here, there's our bale size, so we can just go up and down. Um, that is actually our twine spacing from side to side, so we can actually adjust that on the go um, how much more we want. Okay, so if we go back to net wrap, 
Okay, so when we did the net wrap cycle, when we wrapped it, so you can hear that buzzer. So if you just hit the down button, okay, it was flash and stop E301. Okay, so if you looked in the manual, I can pretty much guarantee you that is the twine knot feeding um, error code for that. So it, uh, yeah, that's basically the, the monitor in itself. Um, there is a way you can actually program this thing. Um, you, have to, you have to hold a series of buttons on there and then uh, the manual will explain how to do that um, to go do your calibrations as far as your twine or as far as your, your bale size and your bale shape. Okay, so right here is our bale shape. So whenever it's calibrated right, those are gonna be in the center and they're gonna be even. Okay, so as we go up to green, that's, that's good, we wanna stay even all the way. If one side goes down to the red, we are severely um, down on the one side, probably by six, eight inches. So it's, uh, as you're bailing down the field, you're just gonna be weaving down, down the row, basically watching those graphs, keeping it, uh, those nice and even. So other than that, um, the other thing to highlight here is some of these monitors in our harnessing, Okay, this one doesn't have a very long power cord. That is gonna be your typical uh, auxiliary plug power. Um, usually every tractor is gonna have one, if not two or three. So that is gonna be the one you want. One's gonna be constant power, one's gonna be ground, and then this third optional hole would be a keyed power. So uh, if you wanted to wire that in, your guy could just slip those pins in, do that. Um, right now, the way this one's sitting, you have to have, you actually have to pan manually shut it off every time you're done with it, so.